Hey gang, have you ever been in Walt Disney World and thought to yourself, I could really use some delicious sizzling fajitas? I know I have, and I'm gonna show you the only place you can get them here in Walt Disney World, so come along. It's based off our knee. If you follow me on Instagram, which if you don't, you should, you've heard, I broke my toe. Yes, I did. So that's why I look a little strange in two different shoes this evening. I was just walking and out of nowhere, a sidewalk decided to bite me. Um, the sidewalk won and my toe got fractured in the joint. So I don't know how much walking I'm going to be able to do. I'm thankful I can walk at all right now. This is kind of my first time getting out of the house other than maybe work here and there. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to get back into the parks for a little bit. I'm worried about like people stepping on it and re-injuring it. So I thought to myself, why not go do a classic dining review of something I've been wanting to check out. I'm a huge fajitas fan. I'm a huge Mexican food fan and the best place to get Mexican food while you're on your Walt Disney World vacation, in my opinion, is definitely Disney's Coronado Springs Resort. So we're gonna check out the resort and then check out the place that has the only fajitas on property and maybe end the night with a little fireworks. And I know this guy, he likes a good little firework session. Fireworks and Mexican food too. Oh yeah, that's good. Fajitas first, then the fireworks. <laughs> Our way to the Maya Grill. I have been to this restaurant here once before so I'm so excited to be back. I think that was even pre-COVID so I know a lot has changed. The decor has not. It is like stunning, makes you feel like you're in Mexico at Epcot. I absolutely love all the vibes in there. And like I said, I did a lot of research trying to find fajitas at Disney World. I was gonna do a series where I tried to like find all the fajitas in Disney World and truth be told, I could not find them anywhere else. This is the only place I could find on the app that has traditional fajitas. Now there are some other areas that have like steak or chicken with like a side of tortillas, but I'm talking bringing me out a sizzling skillet. So hopefully it's sizzling, especially for the price point. Let's go check these bad boys out. And just check out the sort of views you could have here. Window views for days. I can see Grand Destino Towers right over there in the distance. This is definitely one of my favorite parts about the Maya Grill. They have a minstrel in here playing some amazing kind of Mexicana Disney covers. It was our wedding day. I mean, just check out these giant like Aztec pyramids. There's like a planet above here and then it turns all the way around into like an Aztec temple included with some little fire goblets above. It's so cool in here. And here is the menu right here. It actually kind of tells you the little story of Maya Grill. Their tale begins many years ago. So definitely pause this and read the story of Maya Grill. It's very, very interesting, but they have all of your classic, your chips and salsa, your taco salads, your carne asada, your chicken mole, quesadillas, and of course, what we're here for, the fajitas. And now their cheapest fajita is the vegetarian one with no meat for $26. Definitely a high price point, but we're going even higher with that steak at $33. So I'm really interested to see what these taste like. The last time I was here for one of my birthdays, like I said, many moons ago, I did get the steak fajitas and I absolutely loved them. So I'm hoping they didn't change much from when I had them before. I know the price changed, but Hopefully the flavor and presentation is spot on. But before we get to the food, you know one more thing that they have usually at delicious Mexican restaurants? 
Oh yeah, all the margaritas and tequila your heart can desire. And I'm gonna start with their margarita flight. It's for $35 and the different pairings are a prickly pear, a spicy strawberry basil, and a dragon's top shelf. And even with all the tequila in the world, Travis is still a bourbon guy. So he got a little Buffalo Trace on the rocks. Look how beautiful this flight looks right here. Like usually a margarita flight always looks beautiful, but the colors and the presentation on point. And I think for the price point, the pours look really good. I mean, this just looks like a regular size margarita. What did we do, Travis? Oh no. <laughs> now we have three margaritas before dinner is here, but let's get to trying them. This is the prickly pear, and this is definitely the most beautiful of the colors with the little pink rim. Oh my gosh. Where's your margaritas, Travis? Where's your... I usually don't like pear either. I wouldn't say I'm a pear person, but uh, I would pair this with any, any dish. It's really, really good. Now on to the strawberry and basil, darling. You can even see some like seeds in there. I don't know if it's like that is the basil seeds. Or... I thought that was a spicy one. Oh, is this the spicy one? No, this is strawberry. Oh, spicy strawberry and basil. That's well, what those little seeds are. You guys know how I feel about spice. It makes everything nice. First of all, it smells like Pandora because of that like spicy pepper, but it's such a good pairing. It's sweet and spicy. And how cold the margarita is making it cools off the spice though. You, I think you actually might like this one, Travis. This is really, really good. The last but certainly not least, this is their Dragon's Top Shelf Tequila. And I think this alone would have been like a $24 drink. Obviously you get a little bit more, but just this drink is $24 and we got the whole flight for $35. So I think this is a really good deal. And I think this is gonna taste kind of like your classic margarita. It does. Classic, perfect, wouldn't change a thing. What's the salt on it though? It's like it a It's kind of like that tahine. Chilies. Yeah, oh. the tahine. I cannot get over this flight. Definitely a win. Hmm. It is good. It's the sweetest of the three. And fun fact, a prickly pear is not actually a pear. Wait, what? It's a cactus. <laughs> no. Or a cacti. Oh yes, it is a cactus. I just heard pear, and for some reason I thought pear. I, I knew that. Maybe it resembles, resembles the taste of a pear yeah. or like the the fruits that grow on it yeah that look pearish of course why would it be pear that does not make sense in this sort of restaurant of course it's a a cactus drink here are the steak fajitas they are served with sauteed peppers and onions cilantro rice refried beans cajota cheese pico de gallo and sour cream you guys can you hear that can you hear that on Walt Disney World property, we are sizzling. We are sizzling and it's still steaming. They dropped this off a little bit ago. They, they are definitely sizzling. Look at this thing and we have some rice and beans, our flour tortillas and accoutrement. Trav, that looks amazing too. That's the little chicken enchiladas and it has a side of sweet plantains, but we also got a little extra side of the marbled potatoes as well. See, this is different because it's usually a red sauce. This is like a like a green sauce verde. verde. Yeah, I love that. So a little rice and beans to start. Mm. The only thing I love more than your classic refried bean is your black bean refried bean, and that's what that is. It's so good. There's the perfect amount of fat. It's not too greasy. It's going to pair perfectly on the tortilla with my fajita steak. I have my first fajita taco or tortilla made, and they did bring me a back of house hot sauce. They said it's a very spicy habanero sauce, so, so do it delicately. I'm not gonna go crazy on my first one, just a couple couple little drips to start. Look how beautiful this looks with like the little corn salsa on there as well. I think it's the perfect little fajita taco and the steak does look the same um, as when I had it last. So let's see if it tastes the same. Mm -hmm. That is so delicious exactly as I remembered and the spicy habanero sauce is even making it kick to the next level. The steak is exactly what you 
want as like a pull apart steak. It has a good little bite with like a good pull, but not like overly fatty where you're like getting into too many tendons and it's hard to like pack it in to a little tortilla. I absolutely love the flavor, love the texture. Probably my only complaint so far for a $35 fajita is the amount of steak that you get. So I put three pieces on that taco and I only have one, two, three, four, five, about six pieces left. I do wish it was just a little bit more of a portion of the steak, although the flavor and the presentation is out of this world. That what do you mean you got five now? What? Don't take a piece of steak. No, we can share. We can totally share. So I'll take some of those chicken enchiladas too. What did you think about those? It's good. It's probably not a flavor I would normally go with because I like salsa verde. It's okay, but it's probably not something I want my food smothered in. But you I could think it was good maybe for ask it for it on the side and like do your own portion probably control. Probably what I should have done. But yeah, no, it definitely is uh, smothered. So, but, but that's, I think that's what the that's enchilada. What a, thing yeah, is. that's kind of what an enchilada is. I want to try a little bit of this chicken enchilada with the verde on top. Mmm. See, I really like that, but I do know what Travis is saying is like, if you really don't like your tortilla, like if you don't like a wet burrito, you're not gonna like this. It is smothered in that sauce. So the corn tortilla has no crunch at all. It kind of just melts in your mouth, but the cheese is good. The flavor's on point. I love like the pulled chicken. It's like pulled, right, Trav? Yeah, they call it chicken tinga. Chicken tinga. I like the tinga. The tinga is giving me tingles. Now, Travis's dish comes with sweet plantains and he does not like them. So I will take the plantains from my sweet. Ooh. I just don't like Look. bananas for texture. They just. They're not bananas, they're, they're the plantains. Same family. <laughs> See, the same thing. Don't judge them based off their family members. <laughs> They usually fry these and then put some sort of delicious thing on it. Is this cheese on top, Trav? There's definitely like a sour, kind of sauce. some kind of like sour cream cheese sauce on top. So let's give it a try. Mm. Look how good. Fried on the outside and sweet and soft inside. Really, really good. I can't believe this is a side dish. So I don't know why. These are really good, but for some reason I get like a donut taste off of them. <laughs> the I guess maybe the, potatoes. Way maybe the way they're fried. Yeah, I the potatoes know. taste like donuts. I don't think that that's a bad thing though. No, <laughs> it's, it's actually really good. Yeah, those were a little extra side dish. We, uh, we did extra because the enchiladas come with the plantains, but we decided to get the potatoes too. And obviously Travis loved them because they're almost gone. I know. Do you know we have to try some of their desserts? So this is their fried churro ice cream. It's fried churro pinwheels topped with a scoop of creamy vanilla ice cream drizzled with caramel sauce for $12. And this is their pastel de tres leches. It's homemade sweet sponge cake soaked with three different milks topped with meringue for $14. And compliments of the chef, this is the Mexican Choco Flan. It's a dense chocolate cake stacked with creamy vanilla flan topped with caramel sauce for $14. Our whole table is now refilled after our entrees of dessert. Check out these churros. They look like little churro rainbows. And of course, a little hidden, like little Mickey. Do you see that? I think it's a little hidden mini right there. And then this is compliments of the chef. Like I said, the choco flan, and this looks absolutely stunning. I mean, I love that it just looks like a plain piece of cake, but it's flan on top. And then tres leches is my favorite Mexican dessert. So although I don't think this will be the best out of the three, I still had to get it to try. Let's grab a little churro rainbow. You can definitely tell they made these in the classic way where you kind of like spin them in a circle as it's frying and then they kind of cut it down the middle to make the shape. Got a little ice cream. I'm not sure if the ice cream is just vanilla or if it's also gonna be churro. I think it's, I think it's just vanilla. Did you hear that crunch, Travis? Yep. <laughs> the ice cream is just your classic vanilla bean, but it's like very vanilla, which I love. Paired with the churro, these are really good. Like, why is no one talking about these churros? I know Walt Disney World is not known 
for their churros, but I think Maya Grill is, but we gotta move on. There's so many more desserts to try. And I love how much use of strawberries that they use because I love strawberries. This one even has blueberries and raspberries as well. All right, let's dive in. We'll get a little piece of everything here if we can. Choco flan is definitely not something I've ever heard of. So hopefully this makes a big impact on the palate. It definitely made impact visually for sure. Texture explosion in my mouth is what just happened. I guess I like flan. I guess I just needed it to be Mexican flan. I did not expect to like this as much as I do, but it mixed, the flan mixed with like the cake texture underneath, with the berries. This is a really fun little spring dessert. Really good. I definitely think this is, it's kind of hard. Maybe get the churro and the flan. They, they were both good in their own right. Now on to what is usually my favorite, which is the tres leches cake. Of course, you know, tres leches means three different types of milk. It's even sitting in a bed of milk that makes it extra, extra creamy. And it doesn't sound delicious, but let's try some of this wet cake. I love that. It's so dense, but the only thing that's really sweet is the whipped cream and the berries. The cake is more just like what moves the sweetness to your mouth and I'm about to be moving some more sweetness to my mouth right now. I'm having a hard time telling you guys if you can only get one, what to get. Um, let's see if Travis can clarify. Trav, if they can only get one of these desserts, what are you choosing? I'm thinking me personally, I like the churros because you got like a little bit of ice cream and then you get like a crispy crunchy churro but this choco flan is pretty close second it's and then so I'm just, good i'm not a tres leches guy i don't like wet wet cake yeah i'm just no not a fan cake. of the taste of either but isn't flan kind of wet cake i guess it's not cake it's I mean, flan <laughs> I mean, I guess it is a little bit wet, but, <laughs> but not you, as much as that. No, this is drenched. That's mildly wet, yeah, but I don't think you can go wrong, really, with any of them. And you guys, my friend Jessica was our lovely server. I mean, thanks for one of the best meals I've had in a long time. I needed it after my broken toe, for sure. <laughs> Make sure you ask for her. If you're here at Maya Grill, she'll give you a great, great dinner service. Yeah. You're welcome. Nope. And after dinner, please do not skip on coming out here by the water and watching the sunset. I was so super happy with that meal. Sometimes when you remember a restaurant like <laughs> pre-pandemic and then you revisit it, you can definitely be disappointed. And I was not disappointed. The flavor stayed the same. The vibe stayed the same. Some of the portions did change. I just wish there was like one or two more pieces of steak like i said for that value but all in all really good and that was your first time ever trav like what did you think like full experience at the maya grill i thought it was really good <laughs> i thought the service was good it's a cool looking restaurant it, you could definitely tell it's an older oh yeah uh, disney vibes kind of my friend jess their, said their they've on. talked about like updating it but like i kind of like it because it gives me like old school Nostalgia disney vibes feels, yeah but... I didn't know if I would like it or not. Um, like I said, the, the like so much sauce on it wasn't my favorite thing, but I guess being an enchilada, yeah. I, I had to know that, that it was going to be smothered. That is one whatever. thing I will say, and I don't know if it's different for lunch, but usually when we eat at Mexican restaurants, you like tacos. They really didn't have a lot of taco choices. I think the only taco they had was a fish taco and you don't like seafood so that yeah. kind of steered you away a lot of, from the tacos a, so there's like a lot of seafood on the menu and yeah. so the, the choices are limited especially someone like me that doesn't yeah. like seafood but i mean for what for what i had i thought it was really it was good. really good and so i think that's the only thing we would say is like maybe have a birria taco on the menu or something like that that could be really great yeah. um but really just fantastic fantastic meal and if you need a fajita fix you now know where you can get it. And I'm doing okay, you guys. This is why I kind of wanted to come to a resort because there's very little traffic at a resort. So I wasn't concerned about my foot getting stepped on or me like tripping over 
like a Main Street Railroad track. I know eventually I will get back to the parks, but in these beginning healing stages, this is gonna be the sort of vibe I'm gonna need. You're gonna see this sort of vibe. Is this pickleball? This is a pickleball court. Pickleball is like all the rage right now and they even have it here at Coronado. That's so weird. Wait, do they just have a set here that you can play? I, I mean, I don't want to injure myself, but I kind of want to try to hit a pickleball if I can. probably should not be doing this while injured <laughs> but like if I see a free thing to do at Disney I have to do it I can't help it and this is broken I I took the broken one since I'm also broken night has fallen pickleball has been pickled <laughs> and now it is time to find a spot for fireworks now unfortunately although you're on the water here it is not a firework view, but they do have a place right next door at Coronado Springs Grand Destino Towers. Let's go check out the Dahlia Lounge. Spaceship Earth, like right there. <laughs> I can see the Swan and Dolphin Hotel. Look, you can even see the Tower of Terror right in the middle of the screen there. Then moving along, do you see that back there? That is Galaxy's Edge. That is so crazy looking. Dahlia Lounge has all the loungers <laughs> so you can put up your feet and relax. And they don't just have drinks and cocktails at Dahlia Lounge. They also have tapas. They have their own sliders, wings, even their own version of some warm churros. So you can always come here and grab some drinks and some food right before fireworks. Well, what an amazing evening and back night out for me. I have not been out for a while. Like I told you, I've pretty much either been working or been at home with my leg up. <laughs> and leave a comment below. Do you guys have any ideas of other things I could do while I'm a little bit injured? I think I'm gonna be feeling it for about four to six weeks. But in the meantime, we might be doing a lot of resort hopping, which is fine with me. And as always here from Coronado Springs, peace, love and positivity and all the good things. Love you guys, bye. That rhymes.